Welcome to part 6 of this low-budget classic motorcycle restoration series. The project's really starting to take shape now. Today we'll make sure the valves are seating correctly and we'll put the head back on the cylinder to move the everyday bike project along. Let's get started. All these valve seat angles are 45 degrees. Now, the cutter I've got here is just to show you. I had to borrow one with tungsten cutters because the valve seats are like stellite, very hard material. This does polish it off a little bit. So the idea is that it's supported again, so it's like a valve stem. Goes into the guide and the cutter. It's got a T-bar on here. You use, I've got to keep the gloves on the head still hot. So you just use these motions like this. And you can hear it. Now if you look, it will start taking out the seat. Now when those old valves are in there, they're wobbling about and you can get literally a, like a lip and they start to pocket the valves, not careful. But that now is, is clean that seat up. Just going to do a little bit more on this one. These aren't bad actually, but I'm really just doing it to show you. So those are two inlets done. Just turn it round. We do the exhaust ones. We recut the valve seats for two reasons really. You find that um, the seat itself could be like an exhaust, they'd be pitted, as these were a little bit. Also because the old guides are quite worn in the valves and the valves are going up and down and coming down and wobbling about, you lose the true angle. So we've got new guides now, we've got new valves that are cut, machined up to 45 degree angle. So if we just now just clean this all up, when we put our valve in and lap our valve in, we get a really good seat. And that's what we're doing, we're just trying to true up everything now and recondition it. These seats aren't too bad, I mean it's quite an old engine, but considering the age of it, it's not bad. It's just a little bit more on these exhaust ones. And the camera now can see now the seat itself now is quite clean. You have a nice taper. So that now is really ready for a valve to be just lapped in. Then we put springs back in, that job will be done. We're just going to do this one. A little bit more on this one to do. We haven't washed any of this out from when we stripped the engine down, so we just want to make sure it's all nice and clean. Then we can just check the springs, make sure they're not cracked. Keep the springs separate. Probably they are the same, but these are the inlet springs and those are the exhaust ones. Sometimes with engines you'll find that the rating of springs can be harder on the different applications. And we always just check the heights of the springs as well. Just make sure they all look the same. What we're going to do now, we've we cut the seats, we're ready to put the new valves in, but we just need to just lap those in with a bit of grinding paste. We probably only need to use fine because the seats are cut, they're all nice and smooth. They're not pitted now, obviously. We've got new valves. Put a little bit of lube on the valve stem. Inlet valve in. Now, good idea, we have a valve sucker. Just make sure there's no oil. It's nice and dry. Because you need a suction on here. Get it central if it fits. Okay, now just a little bit underneath. Don't need a lot, because it'll take it round. But once you've got your paste onto your, your face, valve sucker, use your palms and your hands and just rotate your stick. Keep that straight and it won't, the sucker won't come off. And occasionally just lift it and turn it a little bit so you're not just spinning on the same bit all the time. You can hear it cutting, you hear the paste. Do it a few times and we take it out and just check it and see what's happening. So we take it out now. It's not bad. So the seats have, they have taken a bit of punishment 
over the years. We give that a bit more. It's got a little bit of a lip there, but it will come out. I'm just going to pull it out. So we've done one inlet valve. We're going to do the other one, but we've put the springs with the valve that we've done. So we've got the primary and we've got the secondary spring that can go with that. And we've got the cup, top cup and the bottom cup. So really for, for, for ease, we stick that over the top of there. That one's ready to be installed. We'll do the same on this one, give it three, three cuts with the paste. You can see now the actual face now, it's nice and grey. There's the other valve that's going to be done on the other cylinder, on the other side and that's different colour. So we have a nice seat finish there. We're just going to wash out in the kerosene washer, just all around the valve seats themselves, just to make sure there's no residue or paste in there. So the build up with the spring components that are inside the guide, you have your bottom spring holder cup, your inner and outer spring, your top cup. And then when the collets are back in, one, we have those retained like this. So that would be inside, but springs under a lot of compression, obviously when the collets are in, because the bottom cup is held into the top of the head. A little bit of oil on the stem. Okay, we're just going to use a valve tool now, valve compressor, just to pull up on the valve spring. Just make sure that this is in the centre of the valve. Go a bit more with that, and we're ready to put our collets back in. Okay, we're, we're trying to do this with a magnet so you can see what I'm doing. We need to put one each side of the valve. One's in. Because our, our valve compressor is not doing it very easily at the moment. I just need to open these jaws out a little bit because they've been moved in for doing a different engine and it's not holding the, the cup properly. The cutaway in this stem is slightly different profile to the old valve. If we put the collets into the stem, it all looks quite straightforward. But in practice, we're trying to get that. Now, We've had a bit of trouble with the other three. My valve tool itself hasn't got a lot of surface area and we're sliding about. We get one collet in, the other one gets jammed or it slips out. So I've gone back to the other tool. But there's very little margin when we compress this spring to open up the gap to get the collet in or to get both in. And you get one in, it's just a bit fiddly. It's just one of those things. We'll try and put it over the back first and we'll get this back one in. So we release it with the magnet, then we just get the screwdriver. We we'll just keep our finger on the top, we need a little bit more compression on the tool. Right, that one's in. You can see it's quite tight for space. That's in. Now we've got the valves back in. I normally just tap them with a hammer. Give them a tap on the top. Just make sure everything's seated properly. Right, now the head's back together. We're just going to put it on the surface plate here to make sure it's nice and flat. And what I tend to do is just coat the block with a little bit of W40 or the equivalent. It stops the paper sliding about. We put our paper on there. Then spray this. This is two, 240 grit. Give that a good spray. Get our head, put it on there, put your hand on the centre of it, and just backwards and forwards. Rotate it as well. Hang on to the paper a little bit. It shouldn't move too much because we're wet underneath. 
it should grab it a little bit. It's just like moving an iron around really. Just keep that flat. Just let the head slide on the paper. The reason we're doing this is if the head's slightly distorted, uh, it will show up in a moment when we check it, we'll put a straight edge underneath it. But if you haven't got a surface block, a piece of plate glass is all right. A lot of people use grinding paste, but I find that paste is, is, this, is uh, you're leaving it on the surface and you're pushing the head across the paste, then the paste is being pushed away. Well, this is on paper, which is a wet and dry paper. It's a flat anyway. You know what I mean? If you've got paste on there, you're pushing the paste away. This is going to be uh, even coverage all the time. So we're getting a good motion now. Just turn it around, put your hand flat on the top of it. Now if we just check it now. Now you can see it's nice and flat. There's some previous marks here where I've probably had a wire brush across here, a bit rough. Okay, we're placing the steel rule on the edge across the surface of the head and we're taking that across and we're looking for flatness in this. Now what you can do, you can put a light on the other side of the torch and you'll see if there's any light coming through. And we do it from this side as well. That is good, that is good. You also clean up this area. You can see this casting, there's a few little marks in here, but that's nothing to worry about. That's ready to go back onto the barrel now. Right, we've just put a new cylinder head gasket on. It's all put on dry. Just make sure you level, bring this down. For some reason, it's a bit tight on the studs going down. Now it's on, we can put our bolts in. I tend to always use a bit of copper slip. As people know, it's really good on threads. It's good for chasing down the thread into the, into the barrel on cast iron. It means when you come to take bolts out, they usually come out fairly easily. We're now gonna put the four washers and nuts on the studs. We just put a little bit of copper slip on those and the same on the back. So we just get all the nuts back on the studs, we'll get the bolts back down just pinched up. These four top ones are bigger socket, so we do these first. Just wind them down so there's a resistance. These outer studs fall. You now we're just putting these nuts up, just going to change the spanner. We can't get a torque wrench on those, but you know your pressure because it's the same torque setting as those. So by the time we've, we've set the inner working out, you can feel it. Half the time over the years, he's never got a tool wrench used on these. It's only when you come to do it as an engineer that you go back to the correct settings. So a lot of people wouldn't have a tool wrench if they're working on their own bike at the weekend. They whip it apart, put it back together. What I'm going to do now is going to start pulling the head down properly. Um, just make a reference, it always start from the middle and work out. So we start the centre bolt. We won't put it up to it clicks. We just pull it up a certain way on the torque wrench. Then we'll work diagonally, do those other four, and then we'll do the outer ones, which are on the studs. We have to do that with a spanner. We just need to reference to make sure we get the right torque setting for the um, head bolts. So we're setting these to 29.5, it said 28 to 30. So we're just going to pull on that one until it starts to bite. Same with this, just until it starts to bite. That's got the first five in. Now with a ring spanner, we'll carry on. Diagonally. I 
Right, we'll now start with the centre bolt. We'll pull this one down till it clicks off at the right torque setting. Just hang on to the engine at the same time. I'm just going to use a shorter extension. It needs to get a good hold because it's change the socket over and just start working now with the bigger ones. Now we use our spanner. I'm going to run through those again, make sure we are absolutely there so it all clicks off. Start with the centre one with a smaller socket, hang on to the engine. The diagonies do these. Always, always have a cross pattern. Diagonally across. Never do two on the same side. You always work from the middle out. Let's just pull this one down. Just check those off again, these outer ones, because we are relying on what we feel is tight. All done. So the next thing really now is to put a rocky gear back in. We need to put the push rods in and, uh, and put the rock spindles back in place. That's come along quite well.